The following section will cover quality management processes and procedures in the PACS environment. Quality management in the radiology department assesses all aspects of the department that have an impact on patient care and the level of quality of that care. Quality management of concern to staff technologists is divided into two broad categories, quality assurance and quality control. Quality assurance or QA activities in a healthcare facility attempt to address everything that affects patient care, including managerial processes and procedures, image quality and technical standards, as well as the medical aspects of patient care. QA activities begin with observation of department and institution processes that impact the delivery of patient care. Those processes should periodically be assessed for the level of quality and for problems. Once a problem or potential problem is identified and clearly defined, monitoring the data collection can begin to more completely understand the source and the extent of that problem. At this point, an improvement plan can be developed with input from stakeholders. Implementation of the improvement plan will require further data collection at identified points in this process. Data collected from the implementation phase show the plan has created improvements in the process. If there is no improvement, the process must begin again and accurately identify the problem. Examples of QA activities in the radiology department could be evaluating patient wait times, such as how long an emergency department has to wait for x-rays to be taken, and the turnaround time, which determines the average amount of time it takes from the ordering of a procedure to when the radiologist's report is available for viewing. Both of these are common QA activities in the radiology department. Quality control, or QC, activities are related to the technical operations of the department and are part of the overall QA program. Quality control activities monitor equipment performance to ensure it is operating at a consistent level and is properly maintained. QC processes attempt to ensure high quality images are produced safely, consistently, and efficiently. The American College of Radiology Technical Standards for Digital Image Data Man Management Policy states, any facility using a digital image data management system must have documented policies and procedures for monitoring and evaluating the effective management, safety, and proper performance of acquisition, digitization, compression, transmission, display, archiving, and retrieval functions of that system. The quality control program should be designed to maximize the quality and accessibility of the diagnostic information. 
The ACR requires monitoring of digital imaging systems for contrast, spatial resolution, and noise. These parameters, along with the performance of the display monitors, can be checked using test patterns developed by the American Association of Physicists in Medicine, Task Group 18 or the test pattern that was developed by the Society of Motion Pictures and Television Engineers, or SMPTE. In order to be effective in preventing unnecessary exposures or repeat images and overexposure of the patient, QC testing must be performed on a regularly scheduled basis be consistent in methodology, and be documented. Deviations must be reported to the physicists and followed up with service personnel. In addition to the quality parameters previously discussed, digital imaging QC activities are also related to the PACs, workstation, and reading monitors, and to image artifacts. As previously stated, both the ACR and the AAPM recommend regular QC testing. However, they differ in their timelines. The ACR recommends testing at least monthly, while the AAPM recommends daily and monthly procedures that may be carried out by the radiographer and annual tests that need to be performed by the medical physicist. According to Carter and Veal, the monitor should be turned on and given time to warm up before proceeding with the test. Check all areas of the monitor for dust and clean if necessary. Using either the Society of Motion Pictures and Television Engineers test pattern or the Association of American Physicists in Medicine, AAPM, Test Group 18's test pattern, evaluate the image of the test pattern for overall image appearance, noting any non uniformities or artifacts. To evaluate geometric distortion, look for variations in the shape of the displayed image. The borders and lines of the test pattern should be straight. Luminance, reflection, noise, and glare can be evaluated with a luminance meter or with a photometer and the test pattern. There are a number of AAPM TG18 test patterns that are available for testing other imaging modalities and additional aspects of the PACs. Reject or repeat analysis is not new to medical imaging. In film screen imaging, this was a manual process that required a significant amount of time and was usually performed by the lead technologist or manager. Today, this can be accomplished using vendor software. Analysis of each radiographer's reject or repeat rate is important in consistently producing high quality images and reducing exposure for patients. The analysis should be used to correct any deficiencies in staff knowledge or to direct staff training.
In addition to the reject analysis, technologists may be responsible for inspecting image receptors for dirt, damage, and artifacts. Plates may be cleaned using cotton gloves and manufacturer recommended cleaning cloths and solutions. If artifacts are a result of damage to the image receptor and cannot be remedied, the image receptor needs to be disposed of according to the state and U.S. environmental protection guidelines. The medical physicist performs various QA and QC procedures on either a semi-annual or annual basis. The AAPM has set forth recommendations for the procedures that need to be carried out with all parameters followed. The medical physicist must reestablish baselines for performance, review and analyze reject or repeat logs, check exposure indicator accuracy, evaluate department QC records and the service history of equipment, and finally check equipment performance including collimation, focal spot size, timer accuracy, KVP calibration, exposure linearity, and exposure reproducibility. This slide shows us additional digital system tests that may be performed by the radiographer. Each is described on the following slides. According to Carroll, digital detectors are all inherently non-uniform and corrections have to be made on a regular basis ranging from daily to semi-annually. Field uniformity can be tested using the procedure listed and the image visually scanned for defects. Any defects should be reported to the medical physicist. Phantom images or ghosting effects may be the result of incomplete erasure of the imaging plate after extreme overexposure. In DR, image ghosting or image lag is caused when the electrical charge has been trapped in the metastable sites or F centers of the amorphous selenium or silicone and is released slowly over time, according to Carroll. Luminet's response is the monitor's ability to accurately display different shades of brightness from a test pattern. These must be compared to ad adjacent shades of brightness. This function is essentially identical to a contrast tense test. Artifacts occur in both CR and DR imaging systems. The most common source of CR artifacts is the imaging plate. Artifacts that appear on most or all images are typically the result of problems with the plate reader. DR system artifacts may be caused by electronic faults in the detector elements, or DELs, and by software problems. Electronic artifacts randomly occur on DR images 
for a variety of reasons. These can include Bucky motor interference, X-ray tube rotor initiation, extraneous radio frequency signals, and other electronic interferences, according to Carroll. Software artifacts can result from selecting the wrong procedure from the menu, which leads to incorrect positioning algorithms being applied to that image. Poor positioning, metal prosthetic devices, and other anatomical abnormalities may cause software artifacts in both CR and DR. Thank you for choosing medical professionals as your continuing education provider. We hope you found this course interesting and valuable. Before you take the post-test, please be sure to look over the module objectives to see if there are any areas you need to review of the information that was presented in this module. Thanks for watching. To purchase the full course and earn your CE credits, click on the link in the description or head on over to our website at www.medical-professionals.com. And while you're there, check out our All Access Pass, where you can get unlimited CE credits for your state and ARRT renewal for just $49.99. We also offer a host of free resources to make it easier than ever for radiologic technologists like you to achieve excellence. Check out our free radiology CE webinars, clinical reference guides, and free CE courses on our website today. Be more than just certified. Choose medical professionals.